Pros and cons of writing your own game engine. Coming up. Hey guys, it's Travis Broman here with another video. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of rolling your own game engine. Now, this tends to be a quite controversial subject. Uh, a lot of new game developers tend to want to roll their own game engine. Um, and I don't know if that's just because they feel like it'll be a larger accomplishment to, to roll their own game engine, or whether they feel like um, if they don't... If they don't roll their own game engine, they're not um, they're not really as much of a developer. Uh, I know that I have fallen into this trap uh, myself. Of course, I've written um, several game engines at this point. Uh, some of the game engines that I've written have been um, in professional environments. In fact, uh, I'm on I'm writing the second one um, for the place I'm at now. Um, and some of the other ones I've done sort of as a hobby hobbyist. Um, but in general, uh, lots of people have different reasons for, for writing game engines. Um, sometimes it's a learning exercise. Sometimes it's uh, just because they think that that's what they should be doing um, in, in order to develop games. So today I sort of want to talk about not, not so much whether you should or shouldn't write your own game engine, because I've got separate videos about that, but more so on what the pros and cons of doing so are. So uh, I'll start off with the pros first, and then I'll get into the cons. So um, obviously one of the largest pros is that you have complete control over the design and operation of the game engine um, when you write it yourself. So you've written all the codes, so you can completely decide um, how everything works, how all the different components work, how everything interfaces with one another, and how it should be architected from the ground up. You've got complete control over that. Um, and that tends to be one of the largest reasons that, that most people write their own game engine, um, is simply for, for control. Uh, the next point that I want to make as far as a pro is concerned is uh, you have the full knowledge on how to use it. And that's because you wrote it, obviously. Um, so one huge advantage to writing your own game engine is that you don't have to rely on looking something up in order to know how to use it. Uh, because you're the one that created it, you'll know exactly what you need to do. So um, if you're the one that implemented animated sprites, then you'll know your engine's requirements off the top of your head, typically, uh, on what you need to do to get an animated sprite into your engine. Um, you'll also know uh, all the various things about uh, the build process that, that you've put in place. Um, you'll know how to, uh, you know, adjust system settings and configuration and um, world building and all these other things that there's a learning curve associated with those things uh, when you're using uh, somebody else's engine uh, that you wouldn't necessarily have if you rolled your own engine. Now, Probably the, the, the third point, and there's a lot of other points um, on this, but I'm, I'm actually going to stop at three, is it's a huge learning exercise. And this is actually probably one reason that I would recommend that everybody try this at least once. Um, not so much for your first game, uh, as, I, as I mentioned in another one of my videos. If you're a new game developer, this is not the place to start. Developing a game engine requires a lot of knowledge of uh, some pretty low-level things. Um, things like OpenGL or DirectX, um, you know, file I.O., uh, a whole bunch of uh, things, uh, you know, especially things like networking uh, tends to be a big one. Um, that can throw newer developers um, for a loop. So what I recommend is that everybody try this at least once, but don't have it necessarily be... Uh, what you're planning on using for um, production anytime soon because game engines take a lot of time to develop. Um, typically they're done by a team of people. Sometimes you'll see game engines that are done by one or two guys, um, but those are years in the making. There's not just something that you can throw together in a month and expect to have 
AAA games made with it. It's just not going to happen. Um, but as a learning exercise, it's invaluable. And um, a lot of times what will wind up happening is you'll write a game engine and you'll get so far down the road and you'll be like, oh, I, I really can't go any further with this because of a design decision I made back there. And as you do those sort of things and you iterate making game engines on your own, you'll, you'll learn a lot of these lessons um, that you might not have learned otherwise. And in addition to that, um, it's, always, it's always a good idea to understand what's going on underneath the game engine itself. So understanding um, how, how to interact with the graphics card, um, you know, understanding things like how shaders work how files are loaded, um, how, how network traffic is handled, sending and receiving uh, TCP versus um, UDP, things like that. And understanding all those underlying things takes time, but going through the process of implementing an engine that uses all those bits of, of tech, um, really I found has been invaluable experience. And it also makes a lot of things make sense when I'm starting to learn a new engine because I understand what's going on underneath, um, at a certain point, it all winds up being kind of the same thing. Maybe the, uh, the menu structure or the, 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 the asset pipelines are, are different. Um, the importing process or the, the level designers, of course, those things have, have different interfaces, but all the underlying concepts don't really change. Um, the way that things interact with, with each other um, in space and uh, you know, the way that transforms are inherited from, from parent objects to children objects, and even even beyond that, just the way a scene graph works, things like that. If you develop those things on your own, you understand um, a lot of those a lot of those inner workings of a game engine. And so when you're when you move on to, to using a commercial game engine, um, a lot of those things make a lot more sense. Uh, as far as the flip side of this, which would be the cons of writing your own game engine, time is probably the number one reason to not do it. Um, and I mean, like I mentioned before, it, it takes years of development to, to write a game engine. And, and typically speaking, even after years of development, it's not gonna be feature complete. Um, and this is just talking about the core engine. This isn't even, uh, mentioning some of the other items that go into game development, like, uh, or even engine development, um, like point number two, which is tools. Uh, anytime you write a game engine, you've got to write tools that go with it. Now, a lot of people consider um, an editor part of the engine, and that's not actually the case. Uh, for example, um, let's, let's use Unreal as an example. The Unreal editor is its own thing. It uses the engine under the hood, but it is not the engine. It is a series of tools put together in one place for you to use with the engine, to get assets into the engine, to extend the engine. Um, it is, for example, it, it's, uh, it contains tools for importing assets. It contains tools for uh, level editing. It contains tools for controller configuration and uh, game settings and networking. It, it contains tools for all of these different um, aspects of game development that you would have to develop on your own were you to write your own game engine. And there's nothing wrong with writing all those components. And again, I think that you should at some point. But if you're just starting, it, it's a monumental task to overcome. And I really don't recommend it as a starting place, but I do think that every developer should do it. Um, Another large point, uh, a con point rather, is you don't have any support to speak of uh, when, you, when you write your own game engine. So if you use a commercial engine like Unity or Unreal or something like that, there's forums, there's users groups, there's all these different places where you can go and you can ask people, hey, you know, I'm trying to achieve this particular effect, how do I do it? Or, um, you know, how do I, uh, how do I, import an object uh, into the into the world or something like that. And there's, you know, YouTube videos and there's blog posts and there's just countless resources all over the internet on how to do these different things for that engine. And that's because a lot of people use the engine and um, in many cases they'll they'll record their experiences or, or talk about their experiences and, and put it 
out there for others to see and use, which is a huge advantage. And that's an advantage you're not going to have if you're rolling your own tool set. Now, ideally, when you're writing your own tool sets uh, in your own engine, uh, you would have documentation that goes with that. Um, I can't count the amount of times that I've seen these tiny game engines out there that developers have made that have no documentation or very poor documentation. Um, you know, maybe 10% of the entire engine and its features are documented on how to do stuff. And that's super frustrating when you're trying to use something. And what you've got to realize is, aside from what you generate yourself, you've got nothing. No documentation of any kind. And that means you have to, to be really comfortable with what you're doing and be meticulous about documenting things so that when you come back to it in two months, you don't forget how to do stuff. So uh, along with the no documentation, no support, there's also the con of having to generate documentation and or possibly support other people that are using your engine, if that's something you choose to do. Um, and again, just that coupled with having to define your own pipeline. Um, asset pipelines can take a lot of initial development, but also a lot of maintenance um, just to, to keep things up to date and extend features and whatnot. Um, importing assets. Uh, like w one of the hardest things to do in a game engine that I've ever come across personally is implementing uh, 3D models with, with animations and being able to import those and then uh, load those, uh, convert them to a format, first of all, that your engine understands and can use. And then applying those transforms and, and all those uh, various bone animations and, and, um, and weights and things like that uh, to the object in the world uh, at, at the prop, with the proper timing and, and all these things. And accounting for error scenarios is another one. So if somebody uh, imports a crappy asset, how does your engine handle it? Does it just come down to the ground crashing or does it throw an error message up or does it try and deal with it? Um, all these things are, are items that you have to consider when you're writing your own game engine. So, uh, again, they're super valuable as a learning experience. I think everybody should write a game engine at some point, but I don't think it's the place to start if you're a new developer. Um, on that note, I would love to hear back from you guys on if you have developed a game engine, how far you got with it, uh, if you hit any roadblocks, uh, or if you completed it, and and if you've got it, if you've released a game engine out there um, in the wild, I'd, I'd love to take a look at it. In fact, um, you know, if, if if any of you guys have completed a game engine out there, or or um, want somebody to have a look uh, at the game engine that you're making, I, I would love to to hear from you guys um, about that, and and I'd love to take a look at, at what some of you guys are working on. So um, that's really all I've got on that. Um, so just to recap, uh, the pros are you have complete control over the way that things are implemented. Um, you have, uh, you wind up with anyway, a full knowledge on how the engine works. Um, and it's an excellent working, uh, bleh, it's an excellent learning exercise rather. Um, and on the con side, it takes a monumental amount of time. Um, there are no tools other than the ones you develop yourself. Um, there is no support uh, or examples other than the ones you generate for yourself. That includes documentation. And um, your asset pipeline is, is another huge deal. So um, with that, again, I would love to hear from you guys uh, whether or not you've made a game engine. Uh, please like the video and subscribe for more videos. Again, I'm posting these videos daily. So uh, on that note, Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow.